So you're interested in setting up a DaVinci Resolve project server on Linux? Natively? Me too. Let's do it. Okay guys, welcome back to another episode of The Bear Tech. So I've been promising in recent videos that I would be doing a tutorial on how to set up DaVinci Resolve project server natively on a Linux system. So today's that day, we're gonna head across to the computer in a few seconds. I've done a ton of work on uh, making this uh, software work on Linux without needing to use any sort of Windows emulation software. Uh, we can run it purely from the command line. Um, it's super easy to, to set up and, and manage. This solution also automates backups centrally on your server with the ability to then offload them onto uh, cloud storage as well for that added protection uh, and that sort of uh, three point rule of backups. So anyway, I would actually just like to mention that since my last video, where I showed you how to install DaVinci Resolve Project Server onto a Windows uh, system, uh, the Blackmagic team have actually released a new cloud uh, service where for $5 a month, you can actually register to their cloud service and essentially do the same thing that we're doing today, um, but using their cloud offering. So as a massive fan of DaVinci Resolve and Blackmagic, um, I would urge you, if you don't want the management overhead of setting up a system like this, admittedly, I've made it super simple. I've invested a lot of time in the last few weeks uh, writing this piece of software and really testing it out, making it making sure it works properly on Linux. Um, then, you know, go and definitely go and take a look at that. So head over to blackmagic.com and I think it's forward slash cloud. Um, I'm sure you can find it from the homepage anyway. So yeah, so obviously uh, I think it's really important that we support the guys over at Blackmagic, not necessarily that they need our support. I'm sure they make hundreds of thousands of pounds uh, every year, but um, but the software and the hardware that Blackmagic are creating is just sublime. And um, although I'm sure that there is a reason why you want to host your own Linux server, um, maybe it's a data privacy issue or something, um, then definitely go and check out the guys at Blackmagic and their cloud offering, uh, the, which is the, um, the Blackmagic cloud. I'm sure you're probably already aware as to what we can achieve with running a DaVinci Resolve project server. This solution actually enables you to centrally store your project databases, optionally collaborate with other members of your team, whether that be remote or uh, internal to your internal network, but also provides a central location for storing and, and automating backups. Whilst I personally don't collaborate with many other editors on projects, uh, a lot of my editing I do by myself. The project server actually enables me to have a central location to store and access my projects. So this is super handy if, say for example, I want to switch from this computer to another computer in my house. It also enables me to be safe in the knowledge that overnight, um, or whenever we configure our backups to be taken, that the server is actually being backed up automatically and we can optionally send those backups off to cloud storage too. So anyway, when I first actually set out creating this video, um, I started going through all the steps, installing all the different components on Linux. Obviously, as I might have mentioned, um, I didn't want to have to install Wine. I didn't want to have a graphical user desktop environment on, on the server. I just wanted to be able to SSH in or, or access it. You, you know, by all means, you can obviously have a graphical desktop user interface as well. You could, um, you could VNC into the server, you could install XRDP and RDP to the server. I wanted a solution that would mean that I could run a server with minimal resources that wasn't gonna eat up all the RAM by having additional fluff installed. Um, so anyway, I went away and I did some research into this, started documenting the process of installing such a setup. However, it soon became apparent that not only the steps for doing the initial installation of all of the dependencies was actually gonna be quite a pain to uh, record and film, um, let alone then if you wanted to, for example, create additional project databases, as obviously DaVinci Resolve Project Server enables us to host multiple databases uh, on a single server. So I decided that, well, you know, I'm a software developer. I've got lots of experience of building software applications for over 20 years now. And I thought I can simplify this process. I could build a little tool and uh, provide it free of charge to you guys. Um, I'm now using this tool on, um, on my project server. Uh, it's really fantastic. Like I say, it automates all of the backups nightly. I can easily restore backups uh, literally within, within just a few seconds. I can list out all the different backups. It automatically will purge um, backups after a configurable amount of days. And it really is a super tight solution. Uh, really, really decent for, uh, for a Linux based server, which is what I personally want to run. You know, I didn't want to run a Windows server where I'd have to pay for additional licensing. 
you know the, the system resources just to run the base operating system alone um, would obviously uh, would obviously eat a lot of uh, system resources which you don't need you know if you're running a Linux system if you're running a Linux server um, you can actually run this solution today on very minimal amount of memory and the the processor doesn't have to be that hot either this video is probably going to be about 20 minutes long so I'm not going to uh, tag on to the end how to use the collaboration features and how uh, you can enable those. Um, if you go back and watch my video last year about setting up um, the DaVinci Resolve project server on Windows, at the end of that video I actually cover how to uh, chat with other team members through the, the DaVinci Resolve interface, how to uh, edit and, and jump between the different tabs in a collaboration environment. So um, this video will literally just cover the installation and how to use some of the basic features of this new tool uh, for hosting DaVinci Resolve Project Server on Linux. So anyway, uh, taking that into account, um, I decided that I'd write a little tool and uh, that tool has now taken the installation process down um, to about five minutes. So on this video, the actual installation process that we'll go through, which, we'll, uh, which I'll demonstrate in a second, will take about five minutes. Obviously I'm talking in between, um, but I really have simplified a lot of the, the work that you need to do to run DaVinci Resolve Project Server on, uh, on Linux natively. And the other great thing about actually using this software is that you can very easily create additional project databases uh, within just a few seconds. There's a whole web page that I put together giving you examples and, and tips and tricks as to how to achieve different scenarios. So we'll go over that in the video in a second. So anyway, today we're going to be installing two pieces of software. First of all, we need to install the Postgres database engine, which DaVinci Resolve projects uh, are stored in. And secondly, we'll then install the tool that I've developed. So for want of a better name, I've decided to call the tool uh, Studio Server Client. So that's mainly because if you guys use it and enjoy it, then I'll improve upon it over time. I'll actually add more features such as automatic proxy generation when you upload files to your server. So anyway, I must be clear, this piece of software is actually developed by myself. Um, this is not affiliated with Blackmagic in any way. It's designed to simplify and automate a lot of the processes that you would otherwise have to do. So for example, this tool will automatically create your project databases, create a separate database user. So unlike the DaVinci Resolve project server on Windows, whereby you are logging in with the Postgres user, which is ultimately the super admin or the root account. So Studio Server Client will actually go away, create the database, create a separate user account, create the security groups and assign roles to that user account. It also enables you to very quickly and easily reset your database passwords. So if you're, for example, collaborating with some other users uh, and then that user leaves or there's a dispute, you can very easily reset that database password. So in a nutshell, essentially by using Studio Server Client, this is going to rapidly decrease the amount of time it requires you to install uh, such a setup on a Linux server natively. It also simplifies the creation and management of DaVinci Resolve project databases on your Linux server. It automates backups, simplifies the restore process, and ultimately provides you with a very simple, lightweight solution for managing DaVinci Resolve Project Studio databases on Linux. So anyway, without further ado, I should probably just jump in, demonstrate to you how we can set up and use some of the basic features. So in this video, we'll install the server, we'll set up a project database, we'll then go into DaVinci Resolve, connect to that database, we'll then create a very quick project, uh, we'll then do a manual backup. Now remember, this tool will also automate by default uh, backups for you nightly. You can also set custom backup schedules. But in this video, we'll create a manual backup, first of all, of a project that we've created. We'll then go back into the project, we'll destroy it a little bit, make some changes. We'll then save that, and then we'll restore it back to our backup, just so I can demonstrate to you just how quick and easy this tool is to use. So anyway, first of all, you will need a Linux server set up. So this can be a virtual machine or a physical server. Um, if you wanna follow along with the tutorial, I recommend maybe heading over to digitalocean.com where you can spin up um, a virtual machine, uh, like a $6 virtual machine running Ubuntu Server 2204. If you're interested in that and maybe potentially wanna do that in future, I'll also leave a, a discount code in the video description below to give you some additional credit on your DigitalOcean account if that's what you want to do. Personally, today I'm going to be using this pre-installed uh, Ubuntu Server 2204 virtual machine that I have set up running on Proxmox. But all of these steps are gonna be the same. So whatever cloud provider you use for your virtual machine, or if you've got a virtual machine at home, the, the installation process will be the same once you've actually set up and installed Linux. Additionally, I actually did a video a couple of weeks ago, or maybe three weeks ago, covering the installation of Ubuntu Server. Um, so if you want, uh, you can go back and watch that video as well. Again, I'll leave a link to that video in the video description. So anyway, I've talked way too long already. Let's just jump straight in and let's get on. 
Right, okay, so first of all, we're gonna SSH into our server. So we're gonna type in SSH space our username. In my case, it's gonna be B Allen. And then we need to use the at character. And then we're gonna use the host name or the IP address of the server that's going to host our DaVinci Resolve projects. So in this case, I'm gonna use the IP address, which is 172.25.87.56, and then press enter here. You'll then be asked to enter your SSH password, so do that now. Don't worry about you no know, characters appearing here, that's a security feature, it's hidden so that anyone coming and looking over your shoulder can't actually see what your password is. Once you type your password in, press enter, then you'll be granted access to the service terminal. I'm using Ubuntu Server 2204, so first of all what we're going to do is we're going to update all of the operating system packages and software components. So I'm going to do that by typing in sudo apt update, press enter, and then we'll probably be prompted again for our password. Just enter that again now and press enter. This is now going to go away and grab all of the new package updates. And once that's done, we can then upgrade them all by using sudo apt upgrade. And then again, we're going to press enter. So as you can see recently, I've already done the upgrades on this particular virtual machine. So there's no upgrades for me. However, you may be prompted to install some and in which case you might get the option to choose Y or N. Uh, so yes or no respectively. Just press Y and then press enter and then uh, those packages will install. So now at this point, uh, one of the first uh, prerequisites um, for this software that we're going to install is we need to install the Postgres database engine. So here we're going to type in sudo apt install Postgres. And if you press tab here, it'll uh, auto complete once you've filled in a few characters. And then we want to put a space and we want to install another package, which is PostgreSQL contrib, like that, and then press return. You'll then be asked to accept the, uh, the packages and the other dependencies. Again, we're just going to press Y here and then press enter. That's now going to go away and install the PostgreSQL database engine and a few other binaries that we'll use to interact with the database. Obviously, the software that we'll install in a second, the Studio Server client, will actually do all of the heavy lifting behind the scenes. But we do need the Postgres SQL database engine installed first of all, as it is a prerequisite, as that is what will be used to store our DaVinci Resolve projects. So, next up, we need to edit a few files. This is essentially going to enable uh, remote database connections to our Postgres SQL database server. So, we're going to type in here sudo nano. Uh, you can use VI if you like, however, I'm, uh, I'm quite used to using nano. So, um, so it's going to be sudo space nano forward slash Etsy, and then we're going to use PostgreSQL, and then forward slash 14, because that's the version of PostgreSQL database server that, that comes with Ubuntu Server 2204 by default. Uh, you can install other versions if you like, however, this is the version that we'll install, and I know has absolutely no issues at all working. PostgreSQL config. So this is the file here that we need to edit. I'm just gonna press enter. So at this point, we wanna find the line that is commented out in this configuration at the moment, which is the listen underscore address uh, configuration item. So whilst we can scroll down the document uh, manually using our up and down arrow keys, uh, Nano actually has a, a useful um, find feature. So we can type in control and W, which is indicated here by this, uh, this sort of up flag W, so we can type in control and W, and that'll bring up this search box here. So we can now type in listen underscore, and then press enter, and that will jump to the line which we want to edit. So in this instance, we need to do two things on this particular line. We need to uncomment this line, so we're going to uh, move our cursor forward, and we're gonna press the backspace, so it uh, removes the, the hash symbol. And then we're going to change this local host to an asterisk and uh, that will allow uh, any computers to connect to this database server as long as they've got the correct username and password. So at this point, we're gonna save this file now by pressing control on our keyboard and O and then uh, accepting the, uh, the file name to write out to here by pressing the enter key again. Now that's done, we can exit Nano by using control and X as shown here. So control and X and that will bring us back to our terminal. So the next file that we need to edit is the, uh, the pghba configuration. So we're gonna type in here, type in pg underscore hba.conf and then press enter here. 
So now in this file, uh, it's pretty simple. We're just going to go right to the end of the file. So we can uh, we can just scroll down or you can press the, the page down key on your keyboard. And we're gonna add a line. That line's gonna be simply host, tab, all, tab, all, tab, 0 .0 .0 .0 0, 0, 0.0.0.0 forward slash zero. And then we're gonna come across and we're gonna type in scram SHA-256. So this line is essentially saying that we're going to allow any hosts uh, on, a, on any network to connect to our server. So basically this is going to open up our um, network connections and allow user con users to log into our PostgreSQL database server from, uh, from any networks. So whilst you could lock this down to your own subnet, so you could use the, like for example, a 192.168.0.0 slash 24, if you just wanted to open it up to your LAN, um, in a future t tutorial, we'll actually be setting up a, a VPN to a remote cloud server. Um, so in that instance, you obviously wouldn't want to uh, lock down those IP ranges. But instead, we can actually control that through our firewall software instead. So anyway, I'm just gonna quickly clean up this file a little bit. Uh, I'm just gonna match these columns. And then we can just, again, save this file out by Control and X. Save modified buffer, uh, yes. So I'm gonna press Enter here. Now that's done. Now what we want to do is we want to restart the Postgres SQL database engine. So to do that, we're gonna type in sudo systemctl and in space restart and then space PostgreSQL and press enter here. So now that's done, uh, that is all of the prerequisites required um, for installing the Studio Server client software. So at this point, I'm just gonna clear the screen by typing clear and we can now move on to the next step. So now that we have the prerequisites installed, we can now head over to the Studio Server client uh, webpage where we can then copy the, uh, the installer command. So in your browser, type in HTTPS wirebear.co.uk forward slash software forward slash studio hyphen server hyphen client and then you should be presented with a page that looks similar to this. So at this point we can now copy this command here. So ensure you've copied the entire command and then control C on your keyboard and then back into the terminal on the server we can right click and paste or or if you're using a different terminal, if you're on Windows, for example, uh, use whatever method it is to, to paste on there. And then we just press enter here. So this is now gonna go away. It's gonna download the, the latest version of the Studio Server client, and it's going to uh, start the installer. As you can see here, it checks some dependencies. So it's checking if gzip's installed, if, uh, if Postgres is installed. And then uh, the first question it's gonna ask us is, do we want to keep the, uh, the default configuration, which is to automatically purge old databases that are older than 30 days. If you're happy to accept this default here, you can just press return or accept the default value here, which is 30. Uh, otherwise you can type in, for example, 90 days. So in this instance, I will just type in 90 days just for, just for the sake of it. And uh, as you can see, automatic purge of databases now set to 90 days. So at this point, it's now actually gonna ask you if you want to register your interest in future updates and features. So obviously have a good read of this, um, but essentially here uh, you don't have to um, you don't have to fill out this. This is really just a way for me to see if people are um, you know using uh, the software, if it's worth me you know developing it further in future, adding new features. And like I say, we'll never uh, we'll never spam you. We'll never sell this information. It really is just a way for uh, for me to see if uh, people are enjoying using the software and, and potentially for me to continue developing it if it's useful for people. So here you can just press return if you like. Um, however, like I say, it really would help uh, for you to share your email address with me uh, as a way to um, show that you are using the software. But it's entirely optional. Um, in this instance here, I'll just press return just to show you uh, that it doesn't require you to do this. So there you go, the installation is now complete and uh, we are now ready to, to use uh, the, the, the software. Okay, so now that the software is installed, uh, we can actually go and create a project database and we can start using the software. But I would, at this point, I would just like to bring to your attention on this particular web page, if we scroll down, it actually gives you a complete um, sort of tutorial uh, with notes as to how to uh, use the software. So the different commands, 
to, uh, to create different project databases, how to reset passwords, um, et cetera, et cetera. So whilst I won't cover all of these uh, options and features in here, obviously you can go away and, um, and take a good look at that uh, when, when, you've, uh, when you've installed it and um, set it up on your system. However, what we will do is we'll set up a new database, uh, we'll set up a backup schedule, we'll do a manual backup, we'll go and destroy some stuff in our project, we'll then restore that backup just so I can demonstrate to you uh, the, the features and, and power of this software. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create a new project database um, and we can, when we create the new project database, it will create the database and a user account. So unlike the uh, DaVinci Resolve project server on Windows, um, it doesn't use the Postgres user. Um, this software will actually create you a user and assign it all of the correct permissions to that database behind the scenes. So we've got two options for creating a database. We can uh, create a database with a random password. So this might be useful if you don't want to have to keep remembering passwords. And this is probably a good idea um, in general, really, as it will create a strong password uh, of random characters. Or however, if you're simply working by yourself or you're, you feel comfortable with, with using um, specific passwords, you can actually create a database with a specific password by using this command instead. So unlike with a random one where we're just saying we want to run the studio software, we want to create a database called Wirebear. Uh, it will create a Wirebear user and it will then create a, uh, a random password. Whereas if you wanted to specify a password on the creation, you would use the same command, but we just add another argument onto the end, which would essentially be the password that you want to set. So in this instance, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, copy this command um, and what we'll do and then here we can paste that in and we'll create a database called um, test database. So one thing to note here is uh, if, you're, if you're not familiar with uh, command line interfaces, um, generally spaces are used for arguments, uh, CLI arguments. So if you are planning on using a space in the database name, be aware you need to quote that with uh, two quotes here. However, this software does protect against using databases with spaces in um, simply because Postgres doesn't handle that very well at all. So if you were going to enter a space here, uh, the Studio Server client would actually replace the space with an underscore. So in this instance, let's just create a database called um, test underscore database. Well, you probably can't see the underscore. It is there, trust me. <laughs> and then we're going to press enter here. Okay, this is actually a good point here. So uh, in order to create the database, it actually goes away and um, creates a few folders um, for storing backups and other things. So we do actually need sudo privileges here. So we're going to rerun this command, but this time prefix it with sudo. So it's sudo studio space hyphen hyphen create, and then the database name. In our case, that's going to be test underscore database. And we can press enter here. So you're now going to be prompted if you want to enable the automatic nightly backups of the database. So if we were to type yes here, like I have done, uh, it's actually going to go away and schedule um, an automatic backup uh, that will run every night at midnight. This here, this line here, this is really just a, a reminder. So if you had typed no here, you could just go and add an automatic schedule at a later date if you wanted to. So now it's actually giving us the connection settings for our new project database. So it's giving us the database name, the user, and the password. As you can see, this is the random password that it generated for us. So now we can actually go and open up DaVinci Resolve. And we can now use those, those details to connect to our new database. So I'm just going to copy the password. Um, so I'm just going to drag over there and copy that. And obviously, I can remember that the database and the user is both test database. So as you can see, I'm already using this. Um, this project server for uh, for a few other projects um, but in order to add a, a new project library uh, therefore connecting it to our DaVinci Resolve project server we need to use this add project library button just here it's then going to pop up with this window it's important to note here we don't want to use create we want to use connect so we need to click on connect first and then we need to fill out these details so the name as we as we set up on the command line is test underscore database. The location is going to be the IP address or the host name of the, the project server. So essentially the server that you connected SSH to and we're running the commands on. So remember in my case it was 
2587.56. Uh, the username again is going to be test database. And then the password, I'm just going to paste that in and I'm going to click connect. So this will take a few seconds. So this is a good point here. Um, as you can see, I uh, was unable to connect. I actually forgot that I do have a firewall running on this server. So we do actually need to allow the Postgres port through the firewall. So we're gonna type into the, the terminal here, sudo ufw allow 5432. 5432 is the, the default Postgres database port. So we're gonna press enter here. And as you can see, the rule's been added. We can just very quickly confirm that by typing in sudo ufw status and then numbered. Oops, numbered. As you can see, we've got 20 port 22, which is our SSH port, and 5432, which is our Postgres database engine. We can go back to DaVinci Resolve, and we can uh, try that again. So again, the name is uh, test database, as shown, uh, as shown here. So the database is test database, user is test database, and the password is uh, automatically generated there. So we're gonna populate this window with those details. Test database, the location, the username, and the random password, and click connect. So this is gonna take a few seconds. It's going to uh, set up those tables for first use, and then we're actually connected to our database. So now we can click create a new project. We can call this project a test project, test project, and then click create. And now, as you can see, we're now inside DaVinci Resolve, and we're connected to our database and we can now import some clips. So let's do that now. I'll just drag that in, okay, pop to the edit page. And as you can see, we've got this clip here. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to, um, let's add some text quickly. Add a glitched effect here. And we'll just call this, um, Studio server test. All right, let's just quickly play that back. All right, that was good. So we're just gonna save our project. So one thing that I should probably mention here is when using a project server, uh, it's recommended that you actually disable the live save feature. Over slow connections, this can really cripple the responsiveness of DaVinci Resolve Studio. So in which case, you will need to go to uh, the preferences window, uh, locate the project save and load uh, section here, and then click on the user tab, and then uncheck this live save option here, and then save the changes. So I already have disabled that, um, and it works great disabled. Uh, we can just save the project here. Okay, so now we've done a very simple video with a text effect and um, obviously some footage here. I'm going to demonstrate how we can man take a manual backup of our, of our project database. And then we'll come back into DaVinci Resolve Studio, we'll actually completely destroy the video, and then we'll recover it uh, by restoring that backup. So I'm just gonna save this project now, and we can close DaVinci Resolve. Heading back over to our terminal, and let's clear the screen quickly. Um, we're going to now do a manual backup. So just a quick tip, we can type in here studio hyphen hyphen help, if we run that, it actually gives us um, a very simple uh, list of the different commands that we can use to manage our Studio server. So given that we wanna do a manual backup, we wanna use this hyphen hyphen backup and we want to give it the name of the project database. So let's do that now. So we're gonna type in studio space hyphen hyphen backup and then we're gonna type in the name of the database. So it was test underscore database and press enter. Again, we need to prefix that with studio because we need to write uh, to, the, uh, to the protected area on the disk. So there you go, the backup has now been created. And what we can do uh, in future, as you'll notice tonight, if you enable the automatic backups of this project database, uh, a backup will automatically be taken. So we can type in studio space hyphen hyphen backup hyphen list, and then we can specify the database name. So 
for example, when we want to check what database backups are available for test database. So you can press enter here. Again, you need to prefix that with studio. And then we can see the backup name, the date and the size of the backup. So now that we've got this, we'll need to use this name in a second. But first of all, we're going to head back over to DaVinci Resolve Studio, where we're going to destroy that project. And uh, that will demonstrate us restoring it in real time. OK, so I'm just going to reopen the project. Now that we've got it backed up, we're absolutely fine to just start messing around with a little bit. Uh, we can just remove that. And then we can stick this here, maybe. Uh, we can go and play around with the colors, maybe. Uh, and then let's add that. Okay, and then back to the edit tab. Okay, so pretty much we've destroyed that. So I'm just going to save it here and we'll close DaVinci Resolve. And just to confirm that, uh, that it is still destroyed, we'll just reopen DaVinci Resolve just to validate that it is still completely broken. So as you can see, there we go. So it's still got the horrible color grading or the LUT applied um, and we've obviously broken the clip down. Um, so yeah, so let's now close DaVinci Resolve and we'll now head back over to the server where we restore that backup. So as I mentioned, if we wanna see what backups are available, um, we can obviously run that command and uh, we want to then copy uh, this, this text here. And then to restore, we're gonna type in sudo space studio space restore. And then we want to give it the, the name of the database. We wanna restore um, the database called test database. And then we want to give it the archive name. So we can paste the archive name that we took from the listing and we can press enter here. We're now going to be asked if we want to, um, if we definitely want to restore the file. And obviously if we click no here or type in anything other than Y for yes, then uh, that would cancel out. But we're going to press Y and it's going to restore the database in just a few seconds. There you go, that's now completed. So we can now go back to DaVinci Resolve, reopen our project where we should then see uh, our original project come back in. So reopen test project, and as you can see, we're now back to where we were with the, the full clip, uh, the text effect with no horrible LUT applied, and obviously the clip not broken down. So there you go, that's probably all you need to see at this point. What I'd probably recommend you do is um, go and have a play around with some of these commands, um, maybe before deploying it to a production environment. Um, it gives examples, gives notes on this particular page as to, uh, as to what, you can, what you can really do with this. One other great feature is the, um, the custom schedule backups. Instead of having a nightly backup, or you could actually run them both, you could have a nightly backup as well as a, a custom schedule. Um, so we could just add another schedule here. So in addition to that, there are other features uh, of the Studio software where we can, um, we can actually check for updates. So we can type in studio uh, hyphen hyphen check updates, and it will go away and check if there's any updates for you. Um, obviously you don't have to install them. Uh, these will just be new features as they come out. And uh, you know, like I say, if, if enough people use this software, then I'll certainly continue to, um, to develop it going forwards. So this piece of software is currently only available as a command line client on Linux. For the majority of Linux admins, this is gonna be fantastic. This means they can automate things further. But if enough of you start to use and enjoy using this piece of software, then certainly I'll look to build out a web-based uh, client as well. So instead of having to SSH onto the server to run the studio commands to set up and manage your project databases, I'll actually build out a web control panel as well. So you could actually just use a browser from your desktop machine, access it, create a new project database, reset passwords, create manual backups or manually restore uh, project databases as well as you know configuring all the things that's possible with the software. So obviously please show your support in the comments below if this is something that you want me to continue to develop. Obviously there is the ability when you run the installer to, um, to actually go through and register your interest using your email address. As I mentioned, 
and hands up here, I definitely will not sell or use that information in any other way other than just to indicate to me that you are using and you, you like using this software. So anyway, um, that's really it for this video. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed it. Um, you know, if you could go and like the video, uh, give it a thumbs up, you know, subscribe if you're new here and you're interested in this kind of thing. Um, you know, show me all the support if you want me to build out other features such as the automatic proxy generation on Ubuntu Linux. In a future video, whilst at the moment the project server only hosts your uh, project metadata files, uh, in a future video um, I'm going to actually be setting up uh, other features on this project server. So, you know, this will be an iterative process where we can keep adding more features to your project server or your studio project server, as I sort of alluded to in the, in the name of the software. So we'll be installing like file synchronization tools um, and many other features. So, you know, definitely follow along if uh, that's interesting to you and you want to sort of continue this journey over the coming months. So anyway, for now, that's literally all I've got to talk about. Um, this video was probably way too long again, but uh, I hope you found it really, really useful. Um, and yeah, catch you later, guys.